Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Supergirl Season 4. We're going to be reviewing Episode 12. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So this episode was titled Menagerie, and we've waited quite a long time for this episode, so there wasn't too much anticipation for it, apart from it was Supergirl returning, but the trailers really didn't kind of sell it for a lot of people. But yeah, so we'll talk about my thoughts and let me know of your opinions on this episode because I feel like my thoughts may differ a little bit from some of you, but some of you might agree with me. So this episode, I wasn't too hyped for. Like I said, I don't think the trailers were that good, but I love Supergirl and I love what they've been doing recently especially with how they left off and so this episode I found kind of stale I found it a little bit boring and I barely ever find Supergirl boring or any of these shows but some of the storylines were just a bit you know ah uh, like dragging on a bit like why is this here it was a bit boring but I have to mention and I have to say there is lots of parts of the episode that I really did like and I think Alex spiced up the episode I loved the Alex scenes they were by far the best scenes and that literally brought up my excitement for the episode a whole notch, a whole massive notch, because, yeah, I didn't like all of the bits, but there were some interesting things. Again, Red Daughter wasn't mentioned once again, so I'm wondering when they will actually fully go into it, because, like I said, I think the story's a bit stale right now, and I think they need something to sort of spice it up a bit to crank it up a notch. And I feel like I can make a comparison to The Flash Season 4 last year, where that story felt very stale, and there were a few episodes later in the season that actually sort of spiced it up, and it got better towards the end of the season. And I have to say, I've been really liking Supergirl Season 4 from Episode 2 onwards. I've really liked most of the episodes, and I'm a Supergirl fan. But yeah, so I, so I feel bad saying this about this episode so I like bits but I didn't like bits as well so let me know your thoughts in the comments below but let's get into this and let's start breaking down this episode and the different plot points of what's important so let's not go through chronologically but go through what I want to go through first and you know it'll fall in that order so Alex in this episode like I mentioned was my favorite thing and I'm pretty sure we can all agree thank god Alex has finally something to do because she is my favorite character on Supergirl bar Kara and this season all she's done is just be the director of the DEO she's literally just been there to you know clean up Supergirl's mess to point guns at people she hasn't had a real story and I liked it recently with Maggie and with Alex actually furthering on from that and even when she broke up with her when she's trying to get the adoption stuff like she had something to do and so this episode sort of revitalized Alex and she's been revealed in this episode to have been started to date again in the summer that was last year that wasn't mentioned before and she was trying to adopt she was trying to fill in her papers but since Kara was hit by that kryptonite she sort of dropped everything and that's why she's just been full-on DEO that's their sort of idea of why she hasn't been doing much this season in regards to other stuff that was set up in the past and now finally we're getting the payoff and the conclusion and the continuation of this and so Kara and Alex have this amazing scene at the end of the episode like I said I like a lot in this episode but I do not like a lot of stuff as well and this was one of the scenes that I loved with Kara and Alex. Alex comes in through the door, she's like, have this stack of candy, like sweets or chocolate or whatever it is, and Kara's very happy, and then they sit down and they have a talk, and she says she's going to start to focus on her journey, and Kara got the number from the girl at the party that she was dating in the summer, so maybe we'll see Becca a few more times. I'm looking forward to it, although obviously I love Maggie, and Maggie's always going to be her future in a lot of our opinions, but I think it's really great to see her sort of progress and do some more stuff and maybe see some of that and see her actually going out with Becca and maybe other people, it depends on if they want to bring that Becca character back again. And she says she's going to fill in her adoption papers, and so that's presumably going to be happening, and that is something to really look forward to to see more of Alex, to see more of this Alex that is not in the DEO costume that she's always in throughout this whole season, and maybe see her just having a normal life like she did in season 2 with Maggie. That was the best time for Alex. And so let's move on to talk about Menagerie, so she's the villain in this episode, 
and I liked her, but at the same time, she was kind of badly written, and she had a weird fucking snake on her neck. I kind of like the scene where the symbiote actually talks to her, that's like a sort of Venom reference, I guess, but that was probably like one of the only kind of scenes that I liked. I'm looking forward to her next episode, the next episode's trailer looks really amazing. It's the return of Manchester Black, and they tease that at the end with the ending, but this alien, ah, I don't know. It's really shitty CGI, and the CGI snake symbiote thing is actually just from the back of her, and it seems like it just attaches to her. It's really weird. I don't think it looks normal, and I don't think they did a great job CGIing it, but I look forward to her next episode. So, at the end of the episode, we get a big reveal, and this is that the president has found some sort of loophole in order to release... Ben Lockwood to release Agent Liberty to the world because they've been having all these massive protests to try and get him out because he's become this sort of symbol of the movement that they're trying to get across and in this episode his son actually kills or supposedly kills the symbiote in the episode but we saw at the end she still has this part of the symbiote in her neck. This is the way for them to get rid of that weird CGI snake thing popping out of her neck and maybe she is the symbiote herself like inside her so she didn't have to turn into that snake or have that snake on her neck. One thing that I was really happy with in this episode, we get our first mention of Wynn this season. Our first mention, like finally, Jesus Christ. No need to hold it back. And we haven't had one of Monel and also this episode, even though they don't mention Maggie by name, this is a massive mention to Maggie and the past of what Alex has been going through recently. So. Thank God they mention Wynn and they sort of reference Maggie. They kind of really do a bad job, in my opinion, of, you know, carrying on things from past seasons, especially characters that have gone away, like who remembers Snapper Car, who remembers Cat Grant or anyone. No one ever mentions them anymore, and it's just weird when they do that. So it was really nice to hear Wynn's name again. And so let's move on to the next bit, and so this was probably the part of the episode that I really hated the most and I have to say I do like James and Lena together I think they're pretty good they're not my favorite but I think they're good but this scene in the car it seemed so natural it seemed so normal it was shot very well at first but then as Lena reveals like some information to James about her working with the government they have this weird argument and the argument is so unnatural, it's so badly written, like, that is the pure example of shit writing on Supergirl. Like, most of the episode was pretty good writing for the most part, apart from maybe the menagerie stuff as well. But, wow, that scene was really bad. Maybe it was the editing, but, yeah, I, I it was horrible. It was really bad, and it prolonged for way too long. Like, if they were trying to do that, they should have actually had good dialogue if they were going to extend it. But yeah, uh, that was bad. And I know a lot of like Super Court fans, maybe if you're watching this video, will be very happy, but am I the only one that thought that scene was terrible? I don't know. I'm not one to normally criticize Supergirl and say something's terrible or to criticize TV shows and say, oh, this scene was terrible, that was... But I truly believe that was terrible. That was the worst part of the episode. And so let's move on to the next bit. So Nia suits up finally in this episode although we barely see anything from her but that's exciting it was a bit weird how she used a baseball bat i would have thought she would have had like more powers than that but we'll wait and see she's only just starting to find out her powers and become a hero and that's what's teased at the end of the episode when nia and brainy begin to train or nia asks brainy to train so looking forward to that i really love her suit and so at the end of the episode with nia in this final battle, with the weird CGI alien things, symbiote things, the Children of Liberty actually kill the alien, they like behead the alien and they apprehend her. They have a speech and it, in the end, sort of leads into Ben Lockwood's release later in the episode. But yeah, that was a pretty good part of the episode, apart from the weird CGI use in the scene. But yeah, that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know if you do agree with any of my opinions from this review, or do you completely differ? Did you really love it, or did you completely hate it? I'm mixed on the episode. There was bits that I liked, bits that I really didn't like. But yeah, so I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.